Mad bag time again. Let's see what I've got this time. Don't forget to check out links down below for anything you're interested in. And if you just want to find out more about it, just go and check the links out. Also, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel if you've not been here before. This box is a bit squashed, I was a bit worried about it, but it seems like it's okay. So this is some soldering iron bits. A bit of a strange packaging system. Hmm. Okay, that was a mission. So we've got three bits and C245911, C245944, and C255931. Should pay a bit more attention to it, which one's which, shouldn't I? Anyway, so these are for my new soldering iron, my Jabe. Let's pull this out. I'll go in there. So I've got some different tips, because this is like the chunkiest tip I've got, which is just a knife tip. This one's a bit chunkier. So a like, flat one. And that's quite a chunky one here. So this, is, this would be a good one for doing big thermal mass stuff, where you need a bit more power behind it. And it's definitely a lot chunkier than this one. A bit more thermal mass there. I'm not sure which one I have the most, actually. One of those. But it's always good to have a selection of chips. You never know quite know what you're going to need for various applications. I mean, this is like one of my favourite ones to use. Is this, this knife tip? As you can see, it's could use a good clean actually. I'll be really happy with my Jabe soldering station. It's been working really well. Very happy with it. Recommend you get one. If you didn't see a review of it in this thing, go and check out the video. I might even check a link up here for it. Oh, okay, some micro SD cards, four gigabyte. Yep, three four gigabyte cards. So I've basically just been thinking about maintaining a stock of smaller size cards and flash drives and that kind of thing to sort older of equipment. You know, some gear doesn't like high capacity drives. We're getting drives now, sort of 32 gig, 64 gig, 128 gig. You know, it's just getting ridiculously size. You know, and some of these older bits of equipment just don't like it. I mean, even 16 gig is pushing it in some cases, so sometimes 4 is like the most you can use. So I've got some here which are 4 gigabyte, and these just kind of go in my drawers spares because I know that I will be needing these for something one day. Thanks to my supporters as well from Patreon and uh, the YouTube memberships. Anyone that gives me a thumbs up on the video or shares the video, those are all supporters too, so make sure you do that as well. I think I know what these are, actually. Hold on. There's no markings to say what they are, but I think I know what they are. I think these are LP29855 5 volt regulators. Now I actually need these for what well, I've got running over here. So I've got a bunch of these Pro Mini boards. I've got I don't know how many of these have got, loads of them, maybe 20, I don't know, it could be more. And the voltage regulators on these things don't actually work. So you put a raw voltage in, could be, you know, by shoving 8 volts or whatever, 12 volts in this case, I'm trying to shove in 12 volts, and the voltage regulator wouldn't work, the ball just wouldn't power up. If you shove it 5 volts in directly off the 5 volt pin, or the VCC pin, it would work fine. Okay, I did some probing around and found, yet the voltage regulator just doesn't work. It should work. It doesn't. So I've purchased a bunch of these regulators to replace the ones on these circuit boards because obviously the ones on the boards don't work maybe they got fake ones when they built the boards maybe that's why those boards are so cheap when I bought them a bunch of those for that purpose so I've got some tedious soldering ahead of me but uh, you know yeah at least I'll be able to get the boards fully working this one here I bodged on a 7805 regulator 78L05 regulator that's what he's shoved on there worked fine I'll show you these. So these are SOP 23.5 packages. And if I can get the markings on there, you might be able to see the markings if I get it right and in focus at the same time. So these are markers L O U B. Yeah, you can just about to see it there. L O U B. So, yep, that's what I thought they were. Having a lot of trouble recently with YouTube not seemingly recommending my videos to anyone, or not recommending properly. So, I can actually use your help. If you want to 
please help my channel. You can help me by sharing my video. If you get my video, any video, it doesn't matter really which one it is, anything which you think might be interesting to someone, then share it with them. You know, um, could be a mailbag if you think people are going to be interested in that, it could be some of my repairs or CB work or test gear. Just share my videos around because it will definitely help my channel. The more people which learn about the channel and discover it, the better. So this isn't too exciting. Screw in face. It's basically a soft hammer, all right? So you've got this urethane, I guess that is, and a rubber. Relatively soft hammer. So this is good for doing things like panel beating, which is why I got this. And as I've said before, when I've mentioned my other bits of gear, which I picked up, the other hammers and stuff I've shown, those are all based on needing to do panel beating work on bits of test gear, you know, fixing up bent panels. So I thought, right, I'll get some different hammers and this was one which I thought would be good for doing panel restoration you know because it's got a bit of a give in it you know it's not super hard it's not like a steel hammer and so it'd be good for doing panel work just smoothing out small dents stuff like that but yeah as I was saying the support the channel you know if you could just share the videos spread the word about the channel that'd be great because biggest challenge on YouTube is getting a new audience and growing the audience and, and adding new people to it now that's the hardest thing to achieve on YouTube is growth some people have a bit of luck and they might get a video which turns out to be really popular because they've done a really good video and it's been spread around and it's been quite popular in that aspect. Sometimes people, it's based on consistency and people just put out a lot of fairly good videos and they get shared around because of that because they're all a popular topic. The niche I'm in, and the niche most of you are probably in too, if you think about it, is quite a small niche. Electronic stuff, all the electronic repair stuff, it's quite a small niche. It's not a big market that you're trying to appeal to. So if you get channels which have more mainstream, you know, like game console repairs and like that, they'll tend to do quite well because it's quite main mainstream. You know, there's a lot of that out there. Whereas, you know, I'm in this little corner of the internet which doesn't get a lot of popularity. It's very niche. If you could do things to help me out, it'd be great. You know, if you could just share my videos around, you repair videos you see, especially if you're doing test gear stuff, you know, share them to places which might be interested in test gear repair or electronic stuff or whatever it may be I'm doing at the time. So if you see something you think other people might be interested in, please share it because that helps my channel to grow, gets new audiences and helps us spread it. People such as Dave, EV blog Dave I'm talking about obviously, and um, Big Clive, Electro Boom, people like that, they have appealed to broader audiences because of the content matter. So they've had quite a good advantage in that way because you know like Clive for example does lots of general things you know like tinkering with little cheap two dollar toys stuff like that and things you get from shops which are interesting in their own right. Dave's also a little bit of theory and electronics stuff in, in a more advanced ways. I'm trying to share what I'm doing and trying to teach people a little bit and hopefully be useful. I don't know I'm holding a hammer I'm talking about this. Let's back that light button. Uh, <laughs> I want more growth. Help me achieve it. I'd love to get to 100,000. That's my goal is to get to 100,000. Okay, Once you get to 100,000 I'll be completely satisfied. I mean I've, I've done fairly well I think. But I'm at, well, 18,000 now at the time of recording this, just past 18,000. So thank you much everyone for signing up and supporting the channel that way and subscribing and watching my videos. Really appreciate every one of you, I really do. The thing is, growth has been quite slow. I mean, I've been doing this YouTube thing now for maybe six years. So to get 100,000, I'm talking about a lot more time <laughs> and a lot more videos. I know a lot of you do support me in many ways and you're already, you know. And, comments and stuff down below that sort of stuff that will help in chatting in the comments and that will helps the algorithm to perceive things as interesting next thing now this is for my local shop I purchased from and I'm gonna do my usual guess when this comes to the shop they have to be on the bottom of the box and the bubble wrap packaging will be on the top with no protection on the bottom that's often the case but they have been proved me wrong the past two times we'll see have a look. Oh, packaging on the top. There it is in the bottom. Why not wrap it in the packaging? I don't understand. So this is a my box. Now the reason I've got this because I've got a Samsung TV. I purchased it about must be about eight years ago, and it's actually not a bad TV. So it's only 40 inches, but that's big enough for me. I quite like that sort of size. I don't want a massive TV like that. I don't watch that much TV. It's only good for movies and stuff like that really, but and I've only got a small living room so the bigger size doesn't really matter, it gets a bit ridiculous. Anyway, that originally when I got it, it had support for YouTube and all these other internet based services. And 
it's basically all disappeared. I can't watch YouTube on it. I can't do any kind of internet TV on it. It just does almost nothing anymore apart from watch broadcast TV. It's pretty rubbish. Obviously, I watch DVD stuff like you know, it's, it's a nice enough TV in itself. But anyway, so I decided to smash it and get one of these things, so I can then I can watch YouTube again and Netflix if I choose to. I don't know. It could be a complete waste of time. I mean, my internet connection is not the best anyway, but I think it probably could support it. I'm dragging myself into the 21st century, even if my internet connection is only 20th century. All right, I forget to look at like, subscribe. Share my video around. Bye.